gatherers. Good to see you all. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, um. Look at that. You're all coming. You're all so prompt, really. It's impressive. I feel like I have to be prompt. But many of you are very prompt. Uh, nice to be with you here, you here on uh, Tuesday night. And uh, before we even start playing music, uh, and some of y'all prompt gatherers may have to fill in some of the tardy gatherers as they show up, but uh, I just came from a meeting with uh, our Ramble planning committee. I have been talking to some of our Ramble leaders over the last couple weeks, and tomorrow we are going to announce to the world that uh, we will be donating $151,000 to the New England Center and Home for Veterans from this year's Ramble 15. An unbelievable number, an unbelievable thing we were able to pull off in August. For those of you uh, who are maybe joining uh, this gathering tonight, uh, maybe you're joining for the first time. Maybe you've been a gatherer on and off, but uh, uh, you haven't really dialed in to the Ramble. The Ramble is our annual festival to get dedicated to ending veteran homelessness in the Northeast. Um, we've been doing it for 15 years now, believe it or not. And anyone can show up to the Ramble. They can donate whatever they're comfortable donating. All the artists donate their time and their talent. And the thing that is remarkable about the Ramble is that it is run entirely by an army of amazing volunteers. Over 200 volunteers came together this summer, worked all summer long to put together this festival. We work with an organization called the New England Center and Home for Veterans. And while every case is different, on average, they say basically for every thousand dollars we raise, they are able to put the resources together to help one of our heroes into safe and dignified housing. That is 151 veterans that we're helping off the streets, $151,000 raised. Uh, and uh, it is r roughly 10% of the veteran population here in New England. Um, it's amazing to think that this little community of ours is able to make such a big wave when we put our minds and our hearts together to do something good for the world. Pretty incredible. So cheers, gatherers. I am in awe of you all uh, and uh, and everything that we're getting to do together. Everything we've done together. We've done some crazy shit. You know we've gathered like 827 times? That's bananas. Uh, and we failed big time. <laughs> this last weekend. Was it Saturday? I feel like it was Saturday. We were down at Payomet in uh, uh, Payomet Performing Arts Center in Truro, Massachusetts, way, way out on Cape Cod. And we tried to gather with you that night. And we failed. We failed horribly. We failed horribly. <laughs> Uh, it's the first weekend that I can remember, actually, that we have uh, uh, officially uh, blown a weekend gathering. So, uh, as is uh, as is uh, a joy of mine in my life, when things go horribly wrong, uh, I always feel like it's an opportunity to do something a little fun and crazy. So. I think, and I have been itching to do this because it is the best time of the year. I think uh, we ought to do a sunrise gathering this week. Um, I think that sometime before this weekend, and I should set the date, before the end of the gathering tonight, we'll figure out what morning 
I'm going to be up at sunrise. You don't have to be there with me. You can watch it after the fact if you would like, but, uh, but, uh, it is, it is pretty glorious outside for those of you who have been in the Northeast, in New England, uh, these last couple of weeks, it has been just incredible. Um, so, uh, sunrise gathering this week going to happen. I'll figure it out as I play. <laughs> All right. Now, for the music, we started last last week, and y'all know uh, uh, that we're that we're here with me. We started talking about this recording project that we are embarking on. We have uh, we went to Austin, Texas, to work with producer Gordy Quist in June. We recorded three songs: uh, a song called "Revelate," a song called "Letter." And uh, a song that I wrote in the studio uh, during the course of those two days uh, called Come To Me. And uh, and uh, we had such a great time. It felt like such a great fit that we decided we were going to go for a full album. We are going to be headed back into the studio. And we have to pick which songs we're going to record. God damn it, it's the hardest thing. It's the hardest thing. We got a list of about 30 songs. I started going through the list. We talked a little bit about it this summer. The list has shifted a little bit, but uh, uh, we're just a couple weeks away from a flight out to Austin, Texas to start digging in again. And we still have not chosen our final list for the, uh, for the album. And uh, I somehow lost the list of songs that I shared with you, contenders that I shared with you last week. Um, but, uh, I thought that I would bust out this mandolin and play some of our contenders. Uh, uh, I've got a little short list of ones that I definitely know I didn't play last week for you. And we can just talk about them. But the first one I'll start with is one that I feel like is appropriate for, uh, for the day that we announce a giant contribution to the New England Center and Home for Veterans on behalf of the Ramble. Um, it's a celebratory song. It's a song that will definitely be on the album because it's definitely already been recorded. Um, this one is Revelate. The sun comes up shifting to drive
my newbies. Oh, la, my newbies coming back, coming down now. Oh, la, my newbies. Oh, la, my newbies. Oh, la, hey. Oh, God. I dropped my little tuner. Thanks for the claps. Thanks for the love. Um. Yep. Uh, so when we were in the studio in June, uh, it was really, really fun. We uh, The studio that we are working at uh it's called the finishing school it is like a small humble but pretty cool studio in austin and uh and it is packed with incredible instruments and uh and gear um but uh generally speaking they like to at that studio record uh like uh like like they often do in Nashville, which is 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 live, which really kind of suits suits the band, uh, me and the bandies. So uh, uh, when we were in there recording, we were all, you know, I was kind of in a separate room with windows though, so I could see everyone. And the reason why they put me in a separate room was so they could separate the sounds that I was making, right? If I need to sing and edit vocals after the fact, for instance, right? If I'm doing it right next to the drums, the drums are gonna be bleeding all over. That's a term actually that you will, my microphones will be picking up the drums. <laughs> they say the drum sound will be bleeding into my microphones, right? Um, but, um, uh, but it was really cool. And in addition to me and the bandies playing these songs that we love to play, or in the case of that new song, working out a song that we were, kind of digging into in real time, right? Uh, in addition, we had two other players with us. We had um, uh, a guy named Trevor playing uh, keys and organ and uh, who's just a phenomenal player. And we had another guy named Dave playing uh, uh, an amazing electric guitar. It was like, it felt like Adam has a group on steroids, but, uh, but uh, it did not also feel like it still kind of felt like us, which was kind of the magic. Um, one of the biggest challenges for us over the years in the studio has been that there is something that I feel like happens when we're playing and connecting with people live. And it's never quite translated in our studio albums. I don't know why, but uh, maybe some of the magic of us playing, playing with some other people at the same time, like, just being creative together in a space and recording live. I'm I'm hoping, uh, it certainly felt like there was magic happening in that studio and so uh, we can't wait to be recording more. So, Reveille, done. Recorded. We'll see what happens with it. Uh, we actually have not listened, we have not heard it since we recorded it that day. Uh, they, uh, Gordy has uh, uh, not dug into the mixing yet and uh, and does not want to share <laughs> until he's really proud of what it sounds like. So I respect that. As an artist myself, I understand where he's coming from. Um, okay, back to our contenders. There are two other mandolin-based contender songs on uh, uh, for the album, one of which... Um, I will tell you, probably will not make the album because um, 
we have been working on a demo for this song with Josh in Boston that sounds, uh, we just like it so much that we think we want to just release it as its own single. And uh, it's a song that we've been digging into and trying to figure out how to play together this summer. It's called Mama Luna. And uh, so I'm going to play that for you right now. Still a contender. They still may choose. We still may choose to record it as part of this project, but I would say less than 50% ads on this. But uh, but I would say higher than 70% odds that it will be released probably before the full album gets released. It'll be released as a single. Uh, so. For those of you who have not heard this before, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> for those of you who have not heard this song before, inspired by the passing of Harry Belafonte, maybe you could, uh, maybe you can hear some of his influence in my songwriting on this song. Mama Luna, hear me calling. Many roads have come to roam My hands are tired, my feet are stalling I am weary, take me home Look up and see the stars we share Far apart we're not alone Sunshine brings another day I'm coming home, I'm coming home Mama Luna, hear me calling I am lost when I'm away Dancing feels like falling, falling I must be gone, I cannot stay Look up and see the stars we share From a part we're not Sunshine brings another day I'm coming home, I'm coming home I'm on Luna, hear me calling I'm excited. I'm excited for the songs I'm writing these days. Um, you know, part of me wishes that the, that right we just had a ton of resources and we could record 25 of these songs instead of just 10. And uh, and. All right, I've never been in a spot. Oh, thank you for the claps and the love. I'm glad you like that song. I like that song too. Um, <laughs> I've never been in a spot as a writer where 
I haven't had this like big, this large backlog of songs that I wanted to record and release. Um, and it's an interesting feeling. It's, it's like I, these songs, these pieces of art that I've created, I, I play them live. We play them live, but you know, we only had two hours when we play a show. So we don't get to play these often. And oftentimes it feels like these little pieces of art, they don't quite have a voice yet out in the world. And I, and, and there's always like a weight, just a little bit of an invisible weight and a desire to just write, write a song and get it out into the world and let it fly. And I can't imagine what it would feel like to have like a blank slate, like, oh, I've released all the songs I want to release. Now I want to write. I mean, maybe I would hit my first bout of writer's block as soon as that happened. So maybe it's it's good that I got a, a big backlog. But <laughs> um, I don't know if you hear it, but, uh, you know, this is Willa's, uh, basically her second, her third week of school. The first week was kind of like, you go meet the teachers, a couple half days. But anyways, of course, of course, last week, she came home with a cold and she got all of us sick. Uh, Allie, me, Piper, we all have been snotting all over each other in this house. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but, um, uh, <laughs> but I feel like I'm not giving you the performance. I wish I was, but anyways. <laughs> ah, there it is. <coughs> there it is. Whiskey helps. Mm hmm. Okay, so, um, third contender, mandolin song, um, is a song called I Will Ride. Now, I love this song. I think this song will work really well in the context. This was a song inspired by like classic 60s and 70s rock and roll. Uh, and, uh, I like the idea of having some session players in with us. I like the idea of us playing it live. Uh, I like, uh, I think there could be some magic that would happen in the studio. That said, um, uh, there are a lot of contenders and um, a big part of what I want to be listening to uh, as we make these decisions on what to record is what our producer Gordy is feeling in his initial listen through to all of the demos. This was not one of his top songs. He had positive things to say about it, but you know, the man had to sift through 30 demos, uh, which is a lot of listening and a lot of thinking about stuff. So, um, so I, uh, uh, I have kind of, I put together a list of like, and we can talk about this later, but like what I would maybe choose of the last seven songs for the album um, that I delivered to him. Uh, this was within the top, I wanna say 12. This was in the top 12. And uh, so maybe he will take another listen and he will be like, ooh, yeah. You know, no, I think we could kill this. We should do this. Uh, very well might happen. Uh, we will know a lot more in the coming weeks, for sure. But this is a song called I Will Ride. It means a lot to me. And for those of you new to the Gathering series, it means a lot to us gatherers. When we started gathering every single night in the beginning of COVID, I got really sick with COVID. This was way before vaccines. This was in the first, like, month or so of COVID. Uh, I got sick. Um, and, uh, and, uh, I remember the day, you know, at, I remember the day that, uh, I started getting better. And then I remember the day when Allie and I looked at each other, we were living in Chelsea, Massachusetts. And, uh, we had this, uh, uh, about a year before we had bought this tiny little cabin out in the middle of the desert in the Joshua tree area. And we were like, Hey you know what, we're alive. 
Nobody's going to be on the roads. Let's drive out to the desert. Let's just go. Let's just go. And uh, every night at the time we were gathering at 7 o'clock Eastern time, I remember uh, uh, the last gathering before we got on the road. And uh, I shared this song for the very first time. Uh, and I was just feeling so euphoric in so many ways. Uh, we gathered, and then at 8 o'clock, when the gathering ended, we jumped in a van and we started driving west. And I had this song uh, in my head for at least for the first three or four hundred miles. Oh, I fucked it up.
Those high notes were hurting me. Those high notes were hurting me. Whew. It's a little sweaty in here. <laughs> Maybe I'm sweating out my cold. Maybe, huh? All right, you know what we should do? We should figure this out while we can. I want to fi figure out... I want to figure out what the best morning over the next handful of days is going to be. I am looking up. I am looking up what the weather is going to be. Let's find a good morning for a sunrise gathering. Um, now, my caveat is this. Um, my caveat um, is that I don't get very good cell reception around here. For those of you who have, um, for those of you who have seen me try to gather outside here, sometimes it's a little touch and go, but worth a shot. Uh, all right. Well, guess what? It ain't gonna rain this week. But it looks like the least chance of rain is on Thursday. So Thursday it's gonna be. Thursday it's gonna be. And what time is sunrise on Thursday? That's the real question. That's what we got to find out right now. Six twenty one AM. That's going to be early. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt a lot. 621. So I'm going to start the gathering at 6 a.m. Not tomorrow morning, but the morning after. 6 a.m. Uh, I uh, recognize that not all of you will be crazy enough to be awake with me. Um, but uh, I've done a handful. A handful. We've had a handful of good sunrise gatherings so, so far. And every single one of them has had a little bit of magic to it. Um, so, uh, so that's, that's the plan Thursday morning. Um, I'm going to start at six. It's going to be dark when I start. It's going to be dark when I start. And this actually times out well, because I will get, I will play until seven o'clock and then I'll have to wake up my babies. Uh, anyways, it'll be a little, well, Will, Will and I will have to get our shit together quickly for school that day, but we'll tough it out. 6 a.m. Okay. Should we get back to work on contenders? Um, for those of you who just joined us, we are going through contenders for the next album over the next, uh, uh, in a couple weeks, we are going to be flying out to Austin, Texas, working with producer Gordy Quist of uh, Band of Heathens uh, at his uh, recording studio, The Finishing School. Uh, and uh, we've recorded three songs out there that we're very excited about. And we are working our way very slowly, because I'm talking too much, uh, through the 30 or so contenders for the last seven spots on this album. So um, that last one was called I Will Ride. And I'm going to switch over to the guitar. All right. I'm going to play something. You know what? I'm not sure whether or not I played that last time. So I'm going to avoid that one for right now.
This is a dark horse. I'm gonna play you a dark horse. Uh, this is one that we've been uh, uh, that's been requested a handful of times on request nights at the Gathering series. Um, it's a song uh, uh, that I wrote with an amazing songwriter named Anche Duvacat. Um, it was called Desiree, and it was one of the songs that uh, Gordy really liked when, uh, of, of the demos that I sent him. So, um... I'm going to tune my guitar better. Another one with high notes. Okay, we'll see how it goes. She don't see the skylight is fading. Desiree is at it again. Eager to fill in the spaces unwinding, the tangles with the scratch of her pen. I remember her walking in circles. Thought I failed the audition, then her dizzy decision, come play in my rock and roll band. Hey, 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 Desiree, it's a fine mess you got yourself in. Tangled and tragic and walking away in the cold. Show. They'll never get close to you, they'll never know. Desiree is up on a ledge again, but her heart it still lives on the ground. Where it's building a home made of ribbons and bows and the warmth and the cradle of sand. Yep. I love that song. It's got a feeling to it. It's got
got a feeling to it when I sing it. I just love singing it. I love singing those choruses, and I love that character, Desiree. You know? I'm glad I'm not in her band. That would be a hard band to be in. <laughs> um, mm hmm It would be the kind of band, I mean, right? I was thinking about this with all the hubbub about Jane's addiction, right, this week. Um, and in case uh, some of you have kind of not been attuned and there's really no need you, need for you to be. But uh, 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 Jane's addiction was out on tour and, uh, and they got, uh, the lead singer and the guitarist got into a little scuffle on stage in front of like 5,000 people, in front of 5,000 people. You gotta think about the torment, right? You gotta think about how visceral the anger or animosity or just how, uh, 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 right, wretchedly substance abused, <laughs> one or the other, right? You would have to be to lose it like that on uh, on a stage. And I feel like Desiree <laughs> is the kind of unbalanced kind of character band leader who might do something like that, you know? Um, maybe she wouldn't punch a band member. Maybe she would, right? Maybe she would just walk off this. Maybe she would just think, oh, this She's, I sound terrible tonight, and she'd walk off the stage, right? Like, I could picture her doing all these things. Uh, uh, I'm glad I'm not in her band, but I might like to be in her band for, like, a couple months just to experience it, right? I picture her as this, like, genius, right? This genius that is, like, Picking these beautiful melodies that she is like, like a tortured soul, like a like a Van Gogh, right? Van Gogh who lived this tragic life, right? But in the midst of it all, he took all these. Th he had like this conduit that was like coming from like inside his tortured self, and it was just puking out onto those canvases. And when I look at his paintings. I really truly feel those feelings. I feel all those feelings. And man, ain't that the goal of making art? It's a shame that oftentimes uh, those of us that really are able to access those feelings are also, uh, they can't shut them off. They can't shut off those feelings. That's why I think so many musicians abuse substances. So many musicians are so dysfunctional. So many artists are so dysfunctional in other areas of their life, right? And uh, uh, there are times when I feel like that. There are times when I really, really, really feel dysfunctioning. <laughs> dysfunctional. Uh, at just some of the regular things. Um, and there are I guess I feel like with my story as an artist, I kind of haven't had the luxury to be eccentric like a Desiree. <laughs> I don't think I ever had any, right? Never had any big breaks. And, uh, and uh, our, our story, this amazing, inspiring community, it's happened through through, through hard, hard work, all the time hard work, right? And in the, in the context of all that hard work, uh, uh, there's just not a lot of, there's not a lot of time for being too self-indulgent. I have my moments, but anyways, Desiree gets the brain turning for me. I love the song, I'd be excited if it were recorded. The only thing I would not be excited about is what songs it would mean wouldn't get recorded. That's the challenge.
Now, I'm going to play you one right now that has also been a favorite of gatherers since I first shared it at a gathering uh, at a gathering series. Uh, and uh, on the gathering series, at a gathering. It also happens to be a favorite of Gordy's. The challenge here is that I am not sure he and I see 100% eye to eye on this song. Um, it's a song called It Don't Land. It's the story of a couple uh, who are struggling, trying to hold on to their dreams and uh, and kind of falling short of what it takes to achieve those dreams or what they think those dreams are, right? Uh, and uh, I'm a big believer that uh, often as we chase the things that we dream about, as we get closer to our goals, those dreams change. Sometimes as we get farther away from those goals, sometimes as we fail, we discover other dreams. And, uh, um, uh, and so this is a story of them a little bit. Um, now, when I was writing this song, I was picturing like some kind of like loose, dirty kind of rock. I was thinking Rolling Stones as I was writing this song. Uh, that's what I was thinking. And, uh, and Gordy, the producer, heard this song and he really liked it, but he was thinking more of a Jackson Brown direction, which I need to be open-minded about, but I think I want, I don't want this to be too pretty. I don't want this to be too clean. Jackson Brown is a beautiful songwriter and a beautiful storyteller. Uh, and his stuff is very pretty and it's neat. It ain't dirty. It ain't rough around the edges. And this couple in this song, well, they're rough around the edges. So, um, so I have a feeling this will be a top contender for the album if kind of Gordy and I can come to a place where we can share each other's vision. And we might not. And that might be okay. We might share a vision on another song and it don't land, we'll have to wait, right? Um, but this is, this is the process, right? And so uh, hopefully he and I can continue to talk about this song. We've talked about it a little bit. It was one of the contenders actually for the last recording session. And, uh, and as he was kind of sharing his kind of direction ideas, I was not... I was not really feeling it and I didn't want to force it. And so we just decided, you know what, with limited time, this first time through us just dipping our toes in the water together, let's focus on songs that we're really like connecting on. So uh, anyways, here we go. <laughs> And she's holding 
don't mind Ain't salvation a river flowing It's a mountain road, it's a winding plan It don't land. Well, let's talk about a couple things. Let's talk about a couple things before we play one more song together. And uh, uh, number one, for those of you who joined us, uh, thank you for the claps and thank you for the love. I'm glad you liked that song. I really like that song a lot. I really like that song a lot. Um, you know, there are some songs when I write the song, I really think, okay, this is gonna appeal to a lot of people. There are some songs I write where I feel like, okay, this is really not gonna appeal to it. <laughs> A lot of people. Uh, sometimes I have to write those songs anyways, right? Uh, I was sharing some of these demos with a friend, and I was sharing 
uh, song, Searching, a new one that I wrote, Searching for Words That They Haven't Made Yet, in the context of this recording project. And he was like, well, yeah, I don't really, it doesn't really have enough of a chorus to have much of a chance of getting on the radio. And I was like, you know, I didn't say this, but I said, I was thinking, right, you don't write a song called Searching for Words That They Haven't Made Yet because you're trying to write a fucking radio song. Um, you know, there are some songs that just aren't. Look, I ain't trying to be Taylor Swift, is my point, right? Um, and there are some songs that, uh, that I think really do, can connect to a lot of different audiences that listen to a lot of different music. This song in particular, I did not expect to... I just wanted to tell a story. And that's what I was thinking about when I wrote this. Uh, and uh, and it has been reacted to and embraced pretty strongly and passionately by uh, many of y'all. And I want to thank you for that. It's one of the reasons why, right, as, uh, uh, as often as you express gratitude for the Gathering series, uh, I really maintain that I get more out of this than you do. Um, uh, you all continue to shape the direction of the music uh, that we release, the music that I make, the songs that we prioritize with the bandies. And uh, uh, it's a beautiful thing to be able to write a song and not just put it away in a closet, but be able to share it with some folks and talk about it a little bit and then share it again. and hear it requested again and uh and that's how the journey begins right there are some songs that i've shared once or twice on gatherings and there hasn't been a lot of comments and there hasn't been a lot of feedbacks and it doesn't mean that it's not a great song it doesn't mean that it isn't the exact song that i wanted to write at the time but it is just great it, right it is it's it just feels great when you do love a song that uh that i write so anyways uh maybe on the album it may not uh, um, but it is certainly one of the, one of the high contenders. Uh, we will be sharing more contenders, um, as time goes, but I want to talk about just a couple things. I know, uh, uh, we're going into OT here, but, uh, but I just, I just, I'm inspired this week. And so I'm talking a lot. I'm inspired this week mainly for those of you who showed up late. Uh, I'm inspired this week mainly because uh, tomorrow we get to officially announce to the rest of the world uh, that we are going to be donating $151,000 to the New England Center and Home for Veterans through our work at the Ramble Festival this summer. Uh, it is a an unimaginably large check. <laughs> Uh, for me to think about when, especially given the origins of the Ramble, and the origins of my career and the origins of this community. Um, uh, it is, uh, it is something that I can only take a very small amount of credit for because, uh, you all, uh, that joined us for the Ramble, online and in person, y'all that volunteered and worked your asses off to put on an amazing festival, all of the artists that came and donated their time and their talent, you all, this community came together in such an inspiring, amazing way. You, It's been happening for years and this gathering series, I think, kind of put it all on steroids in some way. Just the passion of this tiny little underground grassroots community. And we are doing real impactful things, um, shaping the world that we live in and the culture we belong to, little by little, one person at a time. That's the mission right there. That's the mission. I feel honored to be a part of this ride with y'all. <laughs> um, okay, so that's number one. Number two. <laughs> At this point, I'm not sure, I have to check, but at this point, our new release, uh, Hold Each Other Now, on Spotify alone, I think has something like 35,000 streams. Um, I wanna thank you all for listening and sharing out there. Um, 
I'm going to mention this when, uh, uh, but uh, over the last uh, month, since this song has been released, we have reached 11,000 new Spotify listeners. And we have been added to 3,000 playlists. Almost 3,000. I think it's like 2,900 something playlists. Um, those are incredible numbers. And they're super, super inspiring. Look at that. I bet that's my friend Robin with the exact statistic. 35,268 streams on Spotify. <laughs> um, uh, we do not have, as you know, resources like uh, other bands and other artists do. We do not have a record label and we do not have a management company working for us and we do not have uh, a big publicity machine. We do not have our music on the radio and we do not have our music on soundtracks. Uh, uh, on TV and movies, and uh, we have us. We have us. Yeah. You. And me. My bandies. This community rallying around this music. Um, and there are things that we can do to get this song out into the world. Believe it or not, we have the power to do that. Um, we really do. Uh, the more streams, it, many people think that uh, streaming music on platforms like Spotify and Apple Music, it's like stealing. And uh, uh, many people think that, many artists think that. And uh, so I don't want to speak for any other artists because everybody's welcome to their own opinions. But my opinion is that um, streaming music is the absolute best way to get our music out across the world. And the amazing thing is that we as a community have the power to do that. We can play the song. We can play the song over and over. We can play the song over and over with the sound off, right? But as those streams continue to increase, as we like the song, as we share the song, as we add it to our own playlists, and as we play it, right? Um, the, the traffic triggers algorithms. It begins to uh, get us recommended to other music fans that are listening to similar artists out there. Um, it gets us added to bigger playlists. Uh, and it can take on a life of its own. So I'm told. Uh, our song, Switching to Whiskey, I should say, is only a handful of streams away, uh, released a handful of years ago now. I don't know exactly how many. Switching to Whiskey almost has a million streams on Spotify. Uh, and I will say that our new release, Hold Each Other Now, is really off to an awesome start. And uh, uh, if you gatherers have ever felt like you wanted to help but you wouldn't know how you just listen and share and enjoy listen and stream listen on repeat if you want um <coughs> and thank you i know a bunch of you already have i know a bunch of you already have and uh, uh and i know it's this underground grassroots community that is voraciously listening to this song and sharing it and helping to get it out in this world. And uh, I just appreciate that so much. Okay. Um, there's a bunch of tour announcements that I'm not going to really go deep into right now, except that there will be an email going out this week officially announcing the Ramble Numbers. It will talk about some of the stuff that we have coming up this fall. We have a Midwest run. We are going to be going all over, starting in Vermont and then hitting Syracuse and Ohio and Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin, and Iowa. Boom! <laughs> uh, between now and when that tour starts, we have a handful of shows. We're going to mostly be focusing on studio stuff, but we have a handful uh, of public shows uh, um, uh, in uh, East Greenwich, Rhode Island at a place called The Odium out in Shirley, Massachusetts. It's a super quirky place called The Bull Run. 
playing at the Black Bear Festival. We are playing at a music and arts festival uh, uh, up in Concord, New Hampshire. Um, we're doing some fun stuff. Um, when we come back from our tour after Thanksgiving, we are going to be back in the Northeast. We've got two main shows up in Maine, in Brownfield at the Stone Mountain Arts Center. It's one of our favorite spots at the Waldo Theater in Waldenboro, right near where I am gathering right now. I'm excited, close to home. Um, we are also going to be headed up to uh, Fairport, New York, and uh, uh, right near Rochester. And we're going to be doing a double header um, at one of our favorite spots. Um, uh, Iron Smoke. I believe it's on December 8th. And uh, we're one of the shows we're playing with Mike Mike Powell, awesome artist. And uh, the second show we're playing with another awesome artist, David Miller and the other sinners. It's going to be a crazy, crazy day. Uh, lastly, from, from the day after Christmas through New Year's Eve, we are once again going to be embarking on our dysfunctional family gathering holiday tour with our friends, Cersei. We are gonna be hitting Boston and Fall River and Beacon and Hartford and uh, Derry, New Hampshire again for another New Year's show at uh, Tupelo Music Hall. We are officially announcing that tour this upcoming week. Um, it's gonna be super fun. And just a week after that, we're doing our winter gathering, three days together. Uh, in a in a tiny little resort in Fairleigh, Vermont. One of my favorite weekends of the year. Lots of good things to look forward to. <laughs> okay. Thanks for letting me babble for a while. It's been nice to gather with y'all tonight. Raise up your glasses. Let us drink tea. Always blow steady the river you roam. Make it turn when you're ready to carry you home. May it keep you ahead of the rain. Raise up your glasses. Let us drink to the heavens above. Some say it's a glimpse. God's great design Some say it's the science Of all things combined May we look up And always feel wonder Here is to No need to be Here's to our hearts And the air that we breathe Here's to
Thursday morning, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, sunrise. Be there with me. Or sleep in and watch it later. Please stay safe. Keep on looking out for one another. And I'll see you again soon.